it's 12 months of the day since we went into Kilimanjaro last year for the Prescott Foundation. So we did Kilimanjaro last year and got back uh, three days after you know, reviewing uh, what we did in Killy and just chit-chatting right around the breakfast with Eddie, Eddie Cunliffe from Martin Blondell and Martin said, what's next? And I jokingly said, Everest. I didn't even think anything of it. Then I think it was about five days later, Eddie phoned me and said, uh, I've wrecked it, we can do it, it's possible. Are you up, up for it? And I said, what? He said, we can do Everest Base Camp, Calipathy just one pass. And I said, how can I not do it? You know, it's for the great man, for the foundation and, you know, really looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, mixed feelings really, a um, little bit nervous, a little bit excited, um, but ready to go to be honest. Well it was Taylor that wanted to do it, um, he was the one that when, when he knew that the foundation were doing the Everest thing that he said he wanted to do it. Uh, obviously I couldn't let him go on his own so um, I put my hand up and um, yeah, and, and we're here now and now do you know what, I'm more excited than him so. <laughs> I'm feeling uh, quite nervous and quite giddy, it's mixed emotions, you know, you, I've put 12 months effort into getting this team to this stage. And now you're seeing everybody arrive at the airport. It's uh, it, it, it's quite emotional actually. I am quite emotional seeing everything. This is this is reality hitting me now. It was at the Pride of Saint Helens Awards. Uh, me and my granddad were there, and um, Martin and Adie approached me and uh, told me what they were doing. And it was lucky for them that I was full of gin and tonic. So um, I gracefully accepted. And you know, it's for a great charity. I admired Steve when I was a kid. I never actually met him but we used to go and watch Saints you know pretty much every weekend when you were a kid because it's what you do and if you're from St Helens it's like religion it's like going to church um, so they asked me and I said yeah. Last year we, we were uh, world record holders and uh, played in the highest rugby match um, at the top of Kilimanjaro so I got down I said never again I gave away all my, cl uh, my hiking gear and my boots and everything and then uh, come January I had to buy it all again when I heard about Everest. You're nearly five miles up and, and the air's pretty thin. Uh, you'll have been walking all day so it's pretty tiring but it doesn't take away from the immense sense of achievement that you get from doing something that not everybody does. So, you know, um, that is pretty good. When I first thought I'm going to take more on, it, it was for that aim up and that aim only is to keep Stephen's legacy alive and, and why I'm alive, I'll be doing that for as much as I can do. Well, I played rugby league with Steve Prescott um, back in the late 90s and 2000s and uh, when he was first diagnosed, as we all do every time, there's a, a crisis in the rugby league family. We all try and help and support each other out and uh, his inspirational attitude and, and the way he carried himself in those last eight years after his uh, illness was diagnosed was something that uh, you could not be involved in. So, so. In terms of the charity, um, right from the beginning, I was I was on board with it. Well, it's going to be a great personal sense of achievement. Um, knowing what I'm like here, though, I'll be looking at the top of it going, I'm sure I could nip up there in five minutes. But, you know, I imagine it's going to be quite emotional for some people. You know, there's some people who are dealing with, um, you know, terminal illnesses and the loss and bereavements and stuff like that. I, I don't have, I'm not dealing with anything like that. So if I can be a support to those guys, then I, I'll be happy with that. Who gets to wake up with uh, the peak of Everest uh, as your vista? It's something that not many people do in the lifetime. It's an amazingly great cause. Uh, it carries on the legacy of, uh, first and foremost, my friend, but uh, a great man and inspiration to uh, people in and out of uh, rugby league, uh, in, in sport and in life in general. I do this uh, because I'm, I was inspired by one person, and that's Steve Prescott. I was lucky enough to meet Steve in college before he was a rugby player. Um, so when the news hit that he had the pseudomyxoma, uh, I had no hesitation to join the foundation. And over the last nine years, I've grown through the foundation to, to become a, a trustee. And I used to be nearly 17 stone in weight, believe it or not. And now I'm 13 and a half stone. The older I get, the fitter I get, and it's all because of one person, and that was Steve. I'm just completely inspired by him, he's changed my life. I feel really proud, the amount of messages of, um, of good luck that I've had from friends, the gifts that I've had and um, just everybody's support really has just been immense and it just helps you prepare for it and helps you get through it and that all these guys here today, you know, I certainly wouldn't be here if we didn't have a bit a big team going behind us so um, yeah, I just thank every one of them for, for putting the name down, for, for doing the training and for sacrificing their family time as well for um, for the Steve Prescott Foundation.
I've been involved in a lot of charities over the years, but you don't actually see where that money's going. We're actually meeting people who are now living through through this charity who have got a new life. You know, Stephen didn't get that, but what Stephen did, he gave other people's lives, and if we can carry on giving people lives, that's brilliant.